Hey, everyone. Have you ever thought about the fact that when dogs start to struggle with aggressive behavior or reactive behavior, that I would say every pretty much everybody uh, blames the owner? Hey, everyone. I'm Denise Mazzola. This is Gio. We are from Everything Dog. And um, I am talking today about the role that genetics plays in your dog's behavior and behavior. But specifically today, we're going to focus on aggression and reactive behavior. Um, when it comes to genetics, I think that we can all agree that uh, large breed versus short, <laughs> large breed versus small breed is a genetic um, component, right? If I'm a breeder and I want to breed a small dog, let's say I want to get a small lab, uh, it's going to have to be a mix, right? That's how we have all these doodles and whatever oodles. So I might have a female Labrador and I'm going to breed her with a miniature poodle male, right? By artificial insemination to get some small dogs. Okay. We also recognize that, so long hair, short hair, uh, big breed, little breed dog, shedding, non-shedding, um, how the dog looks, right, is all genetics. It's all done in breeding. We also recognize that our dog's health is um, genetics as well, right? So a lot of breeders will get their dog's hips OFA or OFH certified, elbows the same thing, and they'll have their dog's eyes certified because they want to ensure that you are getting a healthy dog and they will um, have those tests done for you. Okay, great. And, you know, if you have some mixed breed dog and they have allergies or bad hips or dysplasia, whatever it is, no one points the finger at the owner and says, oh, you know, that owner, she she ran with her dog too much or she didn't socialize the dog enough. No, but no you're not going to do that. You're going to say, well, that's just genetics, right? That's, that's the DNA. That's what, um, that's the genes that my dog got. Um, genetics is responsible for premature gray, right? Like when I was in my late twenties, early thirties, I started to get gray hair. Nothing I could do about that. Thanks mom. Love you so much, but that's a genetic thing. My height is genetic. Um, I think whether you're introverted or extroverted is probably genetics, right? It's a, we, we recognize it in, um, in the physical things of our dogs, but we don't recognize it in terms of our dog's personality. So let me uh, let me talk to you about Gio's personality. So he's got a great personality, right? He sits in chairs. He's food motivated. He's very unlab like though. Um, and when I so when I post uh, videos or something about him eating bananas, he loves bananas. The breeder who is a friend of mine and I've trained her dogs for years says, "Oh, his mother loves bananas. Great genetics." When he's laying on his back, all relaxed, I post a picture of that. She'll get on and say, oh, his mother lays like that. It's genetics, right? Um, she wasn't breeding for like field trials or hunting or any of those things. She really wanted very attractive dogs to win in the show ring. So his father is a, and it, it was like the number one Italian yellow Labrador in Italy in 2014. And he's very unlab like. So which is also genetics. He doesn't swim. He will only swim if I swim far enough away from him that he panics and then he'll get in the water and he swims, but he sort of swims at me. It's not really very pleasant. And he doesn't like to get his feet wet and he doesn't naturally retrieve anything. I can throw toys. I can throw sticks. He just looks at it like, you know, what am I supposed to do with that? None of those things matter to me in terms of you know, my love for him, but it's genetics, right? She wasn't looking for that kind of stuff. So if you were a hunter, if you wanted to hunt ducks or um, pheasants or whatever else, and you had him, it would be an upward battle and it would be, um, it would be pretty miserable for both of you because it's not naturally in his genetics to do those things. You would have the expectation that they were, but they were not. So, all right, so we can agree that genetics determine what your dog looks like, long hair, short hair, small breed, large breed, yellow, chocolate, black, if you're in the Labrador family. Genetics will determine a lot of the health factors of your dog, whether they have allergies, uh, good hips, good elbows, good eyes. There's a lot of certification that breeders can do for that. Great. But when it comes to our dog's personality, we just seem to throw genetics out the window and we finger point and we blame the owner and it has got to stop. 
because I have worked with, I have been working with dogs and people for well over 30 years. I have seen thousands of dogs and owners and we know what they all had in common. They all love their dogs. They all would do anything to help their dogs. The ones that are um, aggressive, whether it's resource guarding, fighting with another dog in the house, um, trying to bite their guests that are coming into the house, reactivity on leash, resource guarding, you know, you can't take things away or you can't move them off the bed or the couch or wherever they might be without them becoming defensive and aggressive towards you. There is a large percentage of those traits that are also genetically um, carried, right? So and there's two types of genetics. Today, I'm just talking about personality. Um, tomorrow, when I come on live, I'm going to talk about what your dog was bred to do. And I kind of alluded to that, giving you some examples with Geo here. So fearfulness, anxiety, sound sensitivity, even poop eating um, are just, you know, overall anxiety, worried about the world, a little worried about people, um, not friendly with other dogs, not being super social, like being a little more introverted dog that I don't really care about people, you know, I'm not going to be um, visiting everybody. A lot of those have a genetic component. Now we can't say a hundred percent. There's no, it's not like nature versus nurture. It's a combination of those things. And here's a couple examples. If you take a uh, geo, when I hike with him, he's off leash. And my rule of thumb is if someone is approaching me and their dog is off leash, I will keep him off leash. But if their dog is on leash, then I call him back and I put him on leash. Okay. So I had Amy's dog, Minty. We were coming down this kind of steep, rocky area and I had to really uh, see where, where I was putting my feet. Then I had her on a leash. Gio was in front of me and I looked up and I saw a dog. The dog was loose not on a leash. I said, okay, I'll leave Geo off leash. And as I came down that hill, I looked up again and the dog's tail was tucked and his ears were back. And I was like, oh, that dog's really nervous about this whole situation. And before I knew it, he went after Geo. Like, wah, 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 wah. like right after I'm like, okay. So I called him back. He came back to me, gave him a lot of meatballs and I put him on his leash. And, you know, so the dog is pet. His, that dog was petrified. If that same situation happened to another dog, who was nervous and worried and anxious, sort of constitutionally nervous and worried, that dog could have formed many negative associations that dogs off leash aren't safe. I'm in the woods is not safe. Um, being out in front of my owner is not safe. Like it could have been a myriad of things that that dog made a negative association to. Geo, because he is, because who he is genetically, he's a confident mellow dog. And that's happened months ago. And I've watched him when we're off leash hiking in the woods and I've watched him greet other dogs and there's nothing that has changed for him. Now, if that happened every time he met another dog off leash, yeah, maybe something would change for him. Maybe he wouldn't um, go so far in front of me. Maybe I just keep him on a leash, right? I'd have a behavior change too. But the point is it depends on your dog's personality when how they will take that into their life and their being and how that will manifest in their behavior depends on sort of their constitution. Geo is mellow, a confident dog, not overly anxious about much of anything besides when is dinner time and when is breakfast time. That's about it. And how many defaults is he going to get while I'm talking to you? Okay. So we need to stop blaming the owners. It really drives me crazy. It doesn't matter whether I'm talking to people in the gym, whether I'm talking to a family members, um, friends out to dinner, talking about things and the owner blaming that comes out. And I'm like, guys, like that, like that's got to stop. Owners love their dogs. You guys love your dogs. That is something that has been common for 30 plus years. It has been the number one thing in the thousands of people that I have seen and helped with their aggressive, reactive dogs. They all love their dogs. They're all willing to do anything that it takes to help their dogs. Okay, guys. So tomorrow I'm going to be just being, I'm not going to be on live every day, but I am scheduling it in my calendar. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the role that genetics plays in terms of what your dog was bred to do. 
because every dog has lineage that says hunt things, herd things, guard things, whatever it is. And we cannot forget that. And we can't just, um, again, chalk up our dog's aggressive reactive behavior to the owners. And the biggest thing that people say is, oh, you didn't socialize enough or you didn't train enough. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. So start, start giving some thought to your dog's personality. Your dog is a living, breathing being that is going through their life and taking in those life experiences, just like all of us do, right? Um, and, and how they process that and how that manifests in behavior is going to be different for every dog. All right, you guys, you know where to put your comments. If you like this video, you want to see more, be sure you hit subscribe and put the bell in there so you get notifications whenever I'm coming on. I answer all comments that come on to the YouTube, our YouTube channel and, and to any of our videos. So I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. Bye.